awesome show of cars and I mean they just keep coming. I'm really fortunate today to have Paul Beck's been able to come back in and have a yarn today. And I like to get someone like Paul that knows all the cars and knows all the people to actually give us a bit more information than I can do. So this was a couple of weeks ago now, Paul? Yeah, yeah, it was a few weeks ago. Mate, good show on the bikes and cars. Yeah, and, and they just keep coming. You know what I mean? It's because we hand pick everything that come in, this is the same sort of deal as Killer Rides Live. So um, yeah, we, we and we like to change them every year. Yep. So people coming in get to see new stuff. And there's just so much out there. I mean, I'm obviously doing a lot of shows in the house, so I've seen a couple of these, but I, I really do appreciate the fact that um, the fact that you pick them, you've got some really awesome stuff here. And what I'll get you to do is if you know something about the particular bikes or cars, just fill us in. Yeah, well this one's a West Coast chopper, um, it was bought in from the US. Um, you don't see many choppers these days because it's everyone's, the whole American chopper thing has been and gone. Yep. So everyone's modifying Harleys now, so it was nice to see an actual chopper yeah. in space for a change. A single spinner, mate? Yeah, this one's a, um, a local guy, actually. He's oh, got really? a workshop down in uh, Minamara. Yeah, Russell Hearn. Um, Russ used to work for Trick and Mansueto. He was their apprentice there at one stage. Now he's got his own workshop down in Minamara. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, this is his weekend. This is a beautiful car. It is a really lot. And of course, you'd probably know you've seen enough of my stuff that I, I have a bit of a passion for the old spinners. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that that'll ever get to happen, but classic lines. I yeah. Mean, absolutely beautiful. This one's a 53... It's not actually a spinner, it's a... Um, Victoria, I yeah, see on the, yeah, on the side. Yeah, Victoria, so it's a coupe, it's rare. It's still, and, and believe it or not, it's an original car, except wow. for lowered in the back with the spats. Still got the flathead V8 in it, and it's just, pearl white, it's just stunning. Yeah, lovely car. Timeless. And of course, this car I've seen many, many times now, but um, it's nice to see it a bit closed up, and, and you can get a bit yeah. better look at the shape of the car. And style-wise, this car, closed, looks awesome mm. you know what I mean I mean it's good to see the inside and everything too but to get the side profile of what it's supposed to look like is really good to see and we're just talking about before we went on about the cost of things now and trim and all those sorts of things you look at the quality of the trim nowadays and what they've been able to do is quite amazing isn't that with the trim yeah and that's what it takes to build, yeah. a, build a high quality car now you've, you've got to go that extra mile I notice a lot of the guys are doing um, that whole print, you know, computer print and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, 3D printing, yeah. yeah. I see um, someone the other day, can't think, it might have been downtown, I think, we're doing a full console for a C10 on a printer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Technology. Incredible. Now, this one must um, get you, your fancy going a bit, because obviously you've got a bit of a fancy for these. Yeah, yeah, I love my bullet nose Studebakers, and this one was actually built by a mate of mine, um, Tony, up in Sydney, and he's actually sold the car, and this is the new owner now. But um, yeah, I still have a soft spot for bullet nose tube bags. I'll have another one one day. You'll have one one day, yep. But I want to buy one finished. I haven't got the time to build anymore. I must admit that I think that's a bit of the sign of the times. I'm trying to get this panel van down and it's the same deal. You think, oh, why did I start this? You know, just trying yep. to do everything we're doing. It's um, difficult to get the time. Absolutely. So mate, you had a few good traders in as well? Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 they just seem to pop up every now and then and they come and put on a good show. and. This is another local car, Chris Casser. Home, a, home no, built in his garage. It's a nice looking car. You know, yeah. Yeah, they're all nice, but I mean, this one just has the right sort of look. I like the wheel combo. Yeah. The stance, it just does everything right. And he, he built it to drive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's EFI and yeah, just, it's a very, very nice car. Mate, tea buckets, they seem to be around a lot lately. I noticed they had a tea bucket national somewhere the other day. Yeah, yeah, there was a tea bucket nationals in Sydney. We went to a tea bucket nationals in Canberra. They had cars from all over the country. And because last year was the 100th anniversary of the tea bucket, so they all seem to pop out of the woodworks. So yeah, it just seems to be a resurgence at the moment though. Yeah, well, we had quite a few there, actually. It was good. So, I don't know my Harleys too well, mate. What's, yeah, what's... This, this one's a V-Rod. A V-Rod? Yeah. This one is a Sportster, uh, full custom, engraved and everything, gold plating and everything. But this guy's display was amazing. It's incredible, it's isn't it? LED it, floor. It changes in a minute, I think, over to flames or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just... There next, we go. Next Look at level. that. <laughs> it looks like it's um, just moving down the freeway, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. This, this bike is very cool. Very old school with, you know, those handlebars and a springer front end and all that sort of thing. But it's just... 
to have that difference between that and the V rod next to it, which yeah. is a new technology. I like it, the, the, the gold and the engraving yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's another local car. So I reckon that's a full height roof on that too. Yes, absolutely. Um, same deal, this guy built this car himself. He even did, did the interior himself. It took him a long time to do, but it's just one of those, you don't see 25 Dodge Tudors. So he's, he's picked something a little bit unusual and it was, you know, yeah, and I must admit, I wouldn't have even picked that's what it was. It, yeah, you know, they all have that similar look. Yeah, it's very subtle differences yep. around the front fenders, the way the lips raised and everything. Very little, minimal changes, but yeah. Mate, blue seems to be a bit of a thing too at it, the moment. It, it's a theme at the moment, absolutely. Yeah, there's a few around, and yeah. I like the, the use of the wheels, colours. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, if you change those wheels to, to black or something, you'd have a different car, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would, and it probably wouldn't have the impact that it's got there. But it's, um, yeah, that's the traditional styling is sensational. Now, I've seen this up at the Hot Rod Show. This is a really impressive build, isn't it? It is. It is. And it, he actually won um, Australia's Most Beautiful Custom at our show. Yep. Um, like, look at that. It's just the use of colour... Um, the matte, the satin, yeah. and the gloss together. It's almost too subtle. Yeah. You've got, to, you've got to have a good look at it. Yep. But the guys that built this car, um, image conversions, they do limos and stuff like that. Um, they were responsible for that little red Corolla wagon. Oh, yeah. The, yep. the Summon Axe yep. and, and the. Um, oh, look at that. Like late model dash, and it yeah. just looks like it was always in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a stunning build, this one. And I like the treatment in the boot, and I think um, well, there's something else about this, the rear of this that picked my eye when I seen it up in Sydney. Oh, that's just so nice. Yeah. The contrasting colours. Are... And I imagine it's fully functional as well? I believe so. I believe yeah, the plan is to drive it. So I'd been up to another show on Saturday, so this was um, Sunday Arvo about lunchtime, I think, when I got over there. Yeah, yeah. So normally I'm sort of in before or after, but I was yeah. a bit, um, I was away, so I had to... It was a busy weekend, there was lots on. Yep. This is uh, Glenn Jenkins, 34 Coupe. You might remember Glenn's other car, he had that DeSoto Coupe that had the 21 and a half inch Mickey's on airbag, it was like a light green and white. Right, yep. Late model. No power engine, or this is this is new cars. So what's the go here? So there's about four or five <laughs> rods in a row here with a similar theme happening. Lots of motor. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this one's owned by Joe Kurtovic. Joe's got Mario's 55, 56 Cadillac, the blue yep. coupe, um, plus a couple of other things. This thing was yellow, he said he injected Hemi in it, and then before the show he decided to go blown injected. Um, and the rest in this lineup is owned by Chris Palazzo. Well I thought, I knew Chris built the one next door and I didn't yeah. know if he still had it. But, yeah, um, first time it's been out for a long, long a time. A long time, it, yeah. and it's a beautiful, well they're all beautiful cars, but yeah, it, it's that poster hot rod, isn't it? Absolutely. Like this blew everyone's mind when it came out, and even now it still looks a million dollars. Of course, he's got the little miniature version next to it that runs. <laughs> Sorry, it runs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I'm not sure what engine they have in them, but they, they he drives them around. Yeah, yeah. Um, his son was driving the Camaro around the car park. Yeah, after, that's cool. After pack up, uh, and the Willys drives as well. <laughs> he's got quite a collection. And everything's got to have a Hemi in it for those guys. Yeah. I mean, this had some really nice stuff inside. I think it's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, yep. Like the press panels and that sort of stuff. Yep, that's the one. Do 
It'd be crazy to see at the track, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So everything about that car with the magnesium wheels and it just screams nostalgia. Yep. It'd be a handful. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Here we go. Yeah, I thought there was a bit going on in there. Once the focus catches up. <laughs> I really take my hat off to people that can do that sort of work. That It's okay to do the work. You've got to have the creativity to come up That's with right, the designs absolutely. and the concepts to, to be yeah, able yeah. to do it. Yep. So was this a new concept, Paul, with the Hot Rods and Harleys, or you done one before? Uh, this is the second one we've done. Yep. Um, and it's something that I'd wanted to do for a long time, and it just always got pushed on the back burner. And then I just bit the bullet and went, right, it's going to happen. Yep. And this is the thing with, when we hand pick the cars, we don't always go for the glitz and glamour. Like, this car is really cool. And that got, caught my attention at the Canberra Rod and Custom Cruise. And I actually gave it my choice, um, the Killer Ride Show Standout Award, because it just, just, Something that just one you. of those things, when I, when I saw it, I went, that's me. Yep. Yeah, so. And I mean, that's what I, like, with the start, like I said, I like the fact that, it reflects your personality and, and all your years in the game mm. um, in relation to what you have at the show. And Yeah, um, we try, I, try to cater for as many different groups as we can because not everyone's into full show cars. Yep. Um, there's a lot of guys that like the nostalgia stuff and they like these Harleys. They're different styles, but either one of them you could hop on and ride. Yeah. You know? And they do. They, yeah, they, they all get ridden. A very unusual colour, isn't it, with the cream and then the gold? Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see a change away from reds and blacks. If you need suspension for your ride, make sure you check out Lovells. Go on the website, lovellsauto.com.au, have a look on there and there's a full catalogue you can go through and check out what's available for your car. So good old Lovells, I see they're sponsored your event as well, Paul? Yeah, you know, Mike's been a friend for ever as long as i can remember he used to be part of the local club down here when we had Wollongong street machines going in the early days and um yeah i went i was worked there for a little while yep and um yeah we've always kept in touch and he's happy to support everything we do which is really good yeah it's good to see that they put back into the sport that they uh, obviously manufacture for and obviously yeah. nowadays do so many other things besides yeah. What we do, the, yeah. the four wheel drive stuff and tow packs and all sorts of things. Yeah. And then they have their industrial side as well. Yeah. They do springs for trains and all kinds it's of stuff. It's incredible, so. isn't it? When yeah. You go yeah. It's very, very diverse. Make a couple of local hot rods. Yeah. His and hers. Um, Mika owns the pink one and Pete owns this blue one here and husband and wife. And yeah, they get to a fair few shows and yeah. And they do a bit of manufacturing, so they're rock solid. Yeah. Engineering, I think, yep. is the terminology. Yeah. Sort of people that know my background know that there's a little tie there. With yeah, the, absolutely, we were always rock solid. Yeah, and these two cars here were not obviously not hot rods, but they were there to promote Killer Rides Live Killer Ride. Six, which is our thirtieth anniversary show. So we thought we'd fill up that back corner and and um, and a couple of nice cars they were at that. Yeah, both local cars. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah. The, the local Wollongong scene seems to be picking up a bit again. Yeah, yeah, there's lots happening. Yeah. Lots happening. Every weekend there's something going on, so. Yeah, the old cars and coffee thing's um, really taken off in Australia now, hasn't it? I, I see Absolutely. they've got another one coming up shortly that I'll probably try and get to, but it's a good opportunity to get out, get your car out and... Be home by lunchtime. Yeah, that's right. And it's you know, it's every, everyone's looking for a reason to take the car out and do something. Yeah. And and it's easy, cost effective. You just go for a cruise, have coffee, come home. Yeah. You're not sure that's not really a pickup. They're not really a um, a tea bucket. I was trying to think of, but it's yeah. Um, Open air, wind in the hair. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even sure what model this is. It might be like a 27 or something, Roadster. But um, it's 
a lot of engine for a little car. It is. I'm sure this is the car that used to have a turbo rotor in it. And they've uh, pulled that out and put and it It's now got a blown Ford. Yeah. Actually, a lot of these tea buckets coming up have got Fords in them, I think. Are these Sydney or are they? Yeah, they're Sydney based, yeah. Because there's a, a run of cars when I went up to the Hot Rod Nationals. Yep. It was that last Easter, I think. Yep. There was quite a few tea buckets there, and then the same at Cooley, there was quite a, a row, yeah, of, hot, yeah. row of the pickup, the, the tea buckets up there as well. Yeah. A bit of everything in this lineup. There is this next, um, the grey one coming up, very unusual. Yeah, it's got a Toyota 2J in it. I don't know what that would be registered as. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit of a mixed bag with a sort of almost a roll cage and a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. It runs very good numbers too. I was just going to say that I bet it's fast. Look at the size of the exhaust on it. Yeah. <laughs> Another Clevo with a little bit smaller blower on it. Yeah. All this chrome. Paul always plays up with the camera. The camera's not sure what it's trying to focus on. Yeah, yeah. Get all the light yep. reflecting off the chrome. I notice on an overcast day, if I'm outside, I don't get the problem. But no, it's, that's um, right. There's no shiny bits on yep. it, and that's what throws the focus out. So. So of course you've um, you're back doing the mag again, Paul. So give yeah. that a plug while we're at it. Yeah. So it's killer rides. Um, it's free to read from the website, so you go to killerrides.com.au, click on the front cover, that takes you back to all the back issues that are all there, just click on it and read it, opens like a magazine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, got video content in it. Another local one here? Yeah, yeah, and this thing's cool, I mean, rat rods, they're not for everyone, but the imagination that goes into these cars is second to none. And yeah. We I'd couldn't do a hot rod show without having this car here, because it was I just... I mean, it'd be almost like, um... It'd be very late at night when some of these ideas come out, I think. Yeah, I reckon they'd be into a couple of drinks. Yeah. And, yeah. Someone would dare someone to do it, and I'll go, all yeah. right, it's on. That'll work. Yeah, yeah. We'll give that a go. Yeah. This is a beautiful car, too. This is a full steel, Henry Ford steel car. Very traditional. I like the big brakes on the front. Yeah. So it's probably got some late model discs inside all I'd, that. I'd say so. Yeah. Very traditional and never go out of fashion. Yeah. 50 years time that car's still going to look cool. I love this car. Yeah. It's funny because this car was owned by the guy in the black one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And Lorenzo that owns it now has a business doing Harleys, building Harleys. Oh, okay. But he decided to bring the coupe down this time and he's done a lot of work on this thing since he's owned it. Yeah. It's a very slick car, but I just like, I like the color. I like the number on the side, the white sidewalls. It's just, it's a really nice hot rod. Yeah. It look really cool coming down the road. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hot rodders, they drive their cars. They tend yeah. to do that, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if they build them the show, they'll show them for one or two years and then it's on the road. It's on the road, yep. This is cool too. This is Alan Ogbers. Got a blown flathead. This car was unveiled at Motorex a couple of years ago. Yeah, so Terry uh, Noble that does um, some of the stuff with PPG with me yep. on the channel, he painted this car. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, That explains a lot then. Yeah, he was telling me a bit about that. and. He's got motorbikes as well. He restores, oh, okay. um, you know, Honda's like '70s style yeah, bikes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think I wander around a few of the traders and have a bit of a look. Yeah, another local guy. Well, it's, I didn't even know he existed. He rang me out of the blue one day and said, "I want to have a stand at your show." It's from Windang. Well, yep. Not but a problem. I, I will make the space for you. Yep. Another nice street ridden. Oh. It's funny that you, you look at the show and you think there's not many cars there, but when you try and film them all and talk about them all, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Yeah. yeah. And Killer Rides Live, we've actually jammed even more in yeah. for this year coming because we have a few cars coming back from the early days, which haven't been seen for a while. So what's happening with the, the custom stuff? It looks to me like it's sort of coming back as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's there's a lot being imported at the moment. Oh, right, eh? Because there's America's king of the customs, you know. It's, yep. But there's a lot of 
a lot of custom stuff around there. And I think maybe because it offers more seating for families, they may want to have a 34 coupe, but it's all right if you're two people. Yeah. If you've got some kids, then you, know, you need something a bit bigger. And yep. that's when they go over to the custom side, yeah. So a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah, these are all owned by Peter Pulford out of Canberra. And he was a big name in the um, early days of summer nats. A lot of the, yeah, absolutely. The, you know, one, two, three, four, five yep. summer nats. That's yep. a long time ago, 30 years ago. His name was on a lot of those cars. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he was big into drag racing as well. Um, even um, Benny Gatt's XA Coupe. Yep. I'm, I'm sure Peter owned that before Benny did. Right, okay. Peter used to race it. Yeah. Yep. But he, he always supports our shows and he um, always brings a few bikes along. And this next one here, this yellow one. Yeah, he looks pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, well, it's it makes a lot, a lot of horsepower. Yeah. But out of all his bikes, and he's got quite a few, this is the one bike he would never part with. Yeah, you know, it's not showy, it's not anything, but it's just one of those bikes that. Well, I love it. I love uh, the, yeah, and the I say it just, paint it just and, looks right, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. The unpainted frame and its rigid frame and the spring of front, it's just cool. Speaking of Benny Gat, that's one of his cars. So I did see Lincoln. Ben there. Yeah, um, he bought his Lincoln Zephyr down for the first one. Yep. And then he wanted to come back and bring the Merc down for a change. Still a cool car after all of these years. This thing is still a cool. Cool, car. yeah. I mean, that's the thing about that whole custom side of things is that if you get it right, yeah, it never dates. No, that's right. I mean, all the stuff that that I've been doing for customers and all they're they're all era specific. You yeah. know, oh, that was built in the '70s, that was built in the '80s, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. you build a custom, and yeah. they're a custom. Yeah, that's yeah. right. This one's owned by Dale Crossy from down the coast. Away. And it's an international pickup. It's got injected on it. That'd be pretty rare, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, most people go for early F100s or early chefs. Um, to do an international is a little bit different. I filmed something up at Crookwell the other day that I commented in the commentary. I wasn't, it had a Holden engine in it. I can't think what it was now. And someone said that. The, made a comment that they're pretty sure they actually came out like that with a holding engine. Oh really? Yeah. But okay. Because the engine looked a long way back in the engine bay. Oh okay, that was a Bedford. Yeah. Bedford. Yep. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. And I just sort of went, well, you know, this is on a HQ chassis because they do a lot of that sort of stuff now. Yeah. Yep. But it, um... This is cool. Did you get the headlining? No. Nah. <laughs> it's got a it? like a distressed American flag oh, is it? on the ceiling. Yeah. It's like painted on. Jeez, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people with Harleys doing turbochargers on them. It's just very tasteful when you look at the, the use of colour. Yeah. A little bit of bling and a little bit of matte. Yeah. The detail that goes into these bikes because everything's exposed, you can't hide anything. Yep. So they have to be detailed right. And this trike is owned by the same guy. Yeah, it goes with pickup. the pickup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I personally like all that scrolling. I'd, I'd like to have a go at it one day, but it'll probably never happen. But <laughs> you really got to take your hat off and you watch them do that. Yeah, yeah. A mate of mine does pinstriping, and when you see him do it, it it's just so flowing. It's it yeah, I mean, they get, easy. you know, and then you've got to do the mirror image. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they do one side and yep. then do the other, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's a work of art. And this is cool too. This is first time out was the Summer Nats. I was just going to say, do you know much about it? Because it's obviously got slicks and all on it, and it looks like yeah. it would go fast and around corners. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's a 413 cube LS, dual throttle bodies. Got the original chassis, but modified, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would. 
we'll actually got a little feature on that in the next issue of the mag and I'd love to see this thing punt around Mount, Mount Panorama. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, just somewhere to on a track where it could actually you yeah. know, get some use out of the yeah. suspension while it's under it. And this one, this car's been around a long, long time um, and has gone through a few different owners. And then the guy that's got now, Tony, um, put it into V Restos. Had them redo all the paint and everything. Put I did see in. that on on Facebook actually. Get, yeah, getting painted. Yeah, beautiful car. It's one of my favourite thirty fours. Like yeah, it's just everything about the colour, the style, the wheels, everything about just it just works for me. It. It's right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And he actually won Australia's most beautiful hot rod with that car. So nice. This was cool too. You don't see many Sportsters modified, but that one was really cool. And this is his mate with a nostalgia style chopper. Don't know whether I could handle riding it with those bars like that. No, I don't know. I was just going to say it looks <laughs> like it might be a bit of an angle. Or, or the little seat. <laughs> Wouldn't be real good for your back, but again, the detail like in the seat and yeah. Even the the way the hand grips are coloured. Yep. It's in the tank. The really tank's got the three D effect, and it's just amazing. I often get asked if I would ever do a bike, and I know I'm flat out doing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Because my dad used to do. Um, he used to restore. He had a whole heap of aerials. Okay. And he built a couple of sidecars and that from scratch. Yep. Yep. So it, it's in the blood a little bit, but yeah. Just trying to fit all this in, Paul. Well, there's only so many hours in a day. Exactly right. This was cool too. Like, you don't see many people go too wild with paint schemes anymore. So it was nice to see someone to actually get a little bit out there. Yep. So I think, personally, I think it's only a matter of time we'll start seeing graphics come back. I think you're right. Um... And I think the fact that we're seeing so many panel vans in the build at the moment might have a bit to do with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's another, well, this one's from Nara, Mark Gavin. This is a beautiful Chevy pickup too, 53 model. It's a good thing about these trucks, you can run a blown engine and it's under the, the, the bonnet. Under the bonnet. Yep. No hassles. Again, you know, the silver paint, the nice trim, it's just timeless. So I see you had your normal support crew on, on board. Yeah, we've got the A-Team, the yep. Rides A-Team, that they're there every year and they they just, especially during setup and, and pull down, like they just work their butts off. Yep. Yeah. And Kathy and Montana, I'd, yeah, I couldn't do it without them. No, obviously. Yeah. And they're about to come up, that's why I thought I'd better talk about it. Yeah, and then yeah, my mum's in the ticket box and yep. Kathy's sister Lydia's in the ticket box as well. And, and I caught them out here trying to have some lunch. Yeah, but, that's um, Montana's boyfriend, Daniel. Yep. He's just come straight in from work. Kathy doing what she yeah. does. <laughs> so Paul, thanks for coming in again. Oh, my pleasure. Mate, awesome show. And it's good to see that you're still continuing to be able to put these shows on. It's in the blood. It's in the blood, it's never going to change, a bit blood. like myself. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll be able to catch up again for the next Killer Rides. Yep, 10th and 11th of August. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. No worries, thank you. So don't forget, if you like what you're watching, um, jump on and ask any questions. If I don't know, Paul will probably answer them for me. If you get the time, subscribe to the channel, click the like button, and we'll continue to bring all of these shows and all of the stuff we're doing in the workshop. So, bye bye for now.